In this video, we're going to discuss the solution to question 12 uh, for the practice midterm exam for Calculus 2 Math 1220. You can see that we have to evaluate the integral of x squared times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now, question number 12 on this midterm exam, you can anticipate there to be a trig substitution, but I hope that this square root of 4 minus x squared is really in indicative to you that you want to do a trig substitution. So notice here that we have a difference of squares, a constant minus a variable. So therefore, we're going to do a sine substitution. We want to take a sine, sine theta. Taking the square root of the constant, we get a 2. So that's the coefficient of sine. Taking the square root of the x squared, we get an x. So this is the basis for the rest of the substitution. Some important things we should mention is that if you solve for sine, sine theta is going to equal x over 2. We're going to do that at one point. Um, we're also, if you solve for theta, you're going to get theta equals sine inverse of x over 2. We're going to need that at one point. Taking the derivative, we get dx equals 2 cosine theta d theta. We'll need that. Uh, we also need to set up for the square root, the square root of 4 minus x squared. That'll equal 2 cosine theta. And then lastly, notice that cosine theta equals the square root of 4 minus x squared all over 2. And so this is all the substitutions we're going to need in this situation here. So our integral would be transformed x squared using this identity right here. Uh, we're going to get a 4 sine squared theta. And then the square root using this identity right here becomes 2 cosine. And then the dx using this identity becomes 2 cosine theta d theta. So we end up with 16 times the integral of sine squared theta cosine squared theta. Now in this question, there's a lot of trig identities we're going to need to use here. The first of which, um, we're going to want to use sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta, this double angle identity for sine. And if we do that, notice what we get the following. We're going to get 4 times the integral of 2 sine theta cosine theta. And we're going to get another 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. Um, the first one right here, this is a sine 2 theta. And then this next one right here is likewise a sine 2 theta. Uh, notice we borrowed some of the factors of 2 from the 16 from above. It became a 4. And so we end up with 4 times the integral of sine squared of 2 theta, d theta. So that's a good start. So now we have a sine squared. This now brings us to our next identity, sine squared theta is equal to 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So in particular, the angle will double when you switch from sine to cosine. So the consequence for us here is, first of all, this 1 half, we can combine with the 4 that we already have to give us a 2. 2 times the integral of 1 minus cosine of, this is going to be cosine of 4 theta, because we went from 2 theta to 4 theta, d theta. Now we're in a pretty good position to, to find the antiderivative. Uh, upon doing so, we're going to get 2 times theta minus, uh, we're going to get 1 over 4 sine of 4 theta plus a constant, like so. And so now we're in a position where we can start translating stuff back from theta into x using these identities we did before. But notice these identities are all based upon theta and theta, um, not a 4 theta here. So if we apply the double angle identity one more time, we're going to end up with 2 theta minus 1 half. So if you distribute the 2 here, 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. We're next going to get 2 sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, plus a constant. Uh, this 1 half will cancel with the 2 that's right there. And so if we do the, the double angle for sine one more time, we can apply that here. So we get 2 theta minus, we're going to get 2 sine theta, cosine theta. That's going to be important. So now that it's in terms of theta, we can translate it back. Uh, now what do we do with this cosine of 2 theta? Well, there's one more identity we want to use here. Cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So if we make that substitution here, we're going to get cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta plus a constant. So now we're in position to switch everything back. 
Uh, so we have to do a theta. So we're going to get a sine inverse of x over 2. Sine theta is equal to x over 2, and cosine theta is the square root over 2. So make those appropriate adjustments down here. So like we said, theta becomes a sine inverse of x over 2. Sine is going to become x over 2. Cosine is going to become the square root of 4 minus x squared over 2. I should mention that this 2 cancels with that 2. And then here, cosine squared. If you're going to square, you're going to get 4 minus x squared over 4. And then square the sine, you're going to get x squared over 4 plus a constant, like so. Um, combining like terms right here, you have a 4, you have an x squared and a negative x squared and negative x squared. You'll get 2 sine inverse of x over 2. Um, we have a minus so far 1 half x times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Oops. And then you're going to get 4 minus 2x squared over 4 plus a constant. Uh, what I want to do next is notice that here you have a 4 minus 2x, which could be factored as if you take out a negative 4, sorry, negative 2, you get negative 2 times x squared minus 2, like so. This negative 2 can cancel with the negative 1 half we have right there. And so now we've reached our final form, as simplified as I can make it, 2 sine inverse of x over 2. We're going to get plus 1 fourth, bringing out this 1 fourth right here, 1 fourth x times the square root of 4 minus x squared uh, times, actually I'm going to write this a little bit different. We're going to bring the we're going to bring the x squared minus 2 in front, and then we get the square root. It's always polite to put the square roots in the back there. And so then this gives us our final answer. And so in terms of the trig substitution, the trig substitution wasn't so bad. I think the hardest part of this question really comes down to all of these trig identities uh, that we are using here, the double angles here. And so, I mean, at one point we got up to a 4 theta. Uh, and so we have to deal with that appropriately. But if you're okay with those trig identities, everything else is a fairly standard calculation on this one. So it's gonna be important that you include um, in your, your notes as you're taking this test, uh, lots of trig identities. All the trig identities you would have seen in the lectures, you're gonna to wanna to include those here as they're gonna be very helpful for you.